there's a heretic group teaching a heresy that the Sabbath, seventh day Sabbath is based upon the new moon. Today we're going to further prove that that, uh, that abomination is a lie. In case any of you are doubting or wondering, we are going to prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And then after this, and if you still in your crazy mind, crazy mind want to follow that madness, then you go ahead. You go ahead. But I warn you that amongst this camp may or may not be a member of following COINTEL Pro, the counterintelligence program, which their job is to cause confusion in Israel, hatred in Israel. Listen to me what I'm saying. Now, Abiel, let's get the um, let's get the calendar. I want the calendar. We're going to go over the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, whom certain camps call Yahawashai in the Hebrew. We're going to prove when he died, when he resurrected. <laughs> COINTELPRO. You shall not succeed. You know, with a class of this importance, it is absolutely mandatory, and it's also obligatory that y'all receive this information, that y'all receive this map, because whenever there's a doctrine, like what we're getting ready to go into, a doctrine concerning the Sabbath and concerning the new moon, you will cause brothers to break the most High's Sabbath day. You understand? And that's dangerous. The most high had people put to death for breaking the Sabbath day. Man was put to death for picking up sticks on the Sabbath. And then, then right after that, the Most High had Moses to institute the fringes to the nation of Israel so that we won't forget. That's how serious the Most High is about his Sabbath day. So we don't need to be getting this wrong. Okay? So that's the reason why we must go over these things until you get it. Because there's lives in the balance. Now, as y'all see, here's a calendar. There's a calendar based on Passover. Y'all see where the new moon is, right? The new moon is where you get your high holy days. Get me Leviticus 23, and I think it's verse 4. I want to start there first. The book of Leviticus, chapter 23 and verse 4. These are the feasts of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. Key word that you want out of that verse is seasons. Read the verse above it from the Sabbath. Watch this. Listen good. Everybody pay attention. Leviticus 23 and verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest. In holy convocation ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. What you notice, what you don't hear in this verse is the word seasons. Watch the next verse now. Go ahead. These are the feast of the Lord, even holy convocations, which ye shall proclaim in their seasons. In their seasons. Now he's going to explain the seasonal feast days of the Lord. Read. In the 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Passover. Notice what he said, at the 14th day of the first month at even, meaning evening time, is the Lord's Passover. So the way you count it, you see the new moon, count 14 days, one, one night, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Now at evening will begin the Lord's Sabbath, which is what day? the 15th, which is Passover. Now, stay right there, Captain. I want to go to Matthew 26 and verse 19. We're going to get into the crucifixion and resurrection of Christ now. Pay close attention. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 26 and verse 19. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. So what day are we talking about? The Passover. Go ahead. 
Now when the even was come. Now when the even was come. Now remember, they made ready the Passover. Then it said, now when even was come. So what is it now? The Passover. Read. He sat down with the twelve. And as they did eat, he said, verily I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. And they were exceeding sorrowful and began every one of them to say unto him, Lord, is it I? And he answered and said, oh, That's all we wanted. So now we're, we understand. We're on the same page that this is Passover night, right? I need y'all to understand that. We had Passover, right? Yes, all right, all right. Now, let's go to Matthew 27 and verse 1. Let's go to the next chapter. So now they're eating the Passover. First they made ready, then at even they ate the Passover. They're eating it. Matthew 27, verse 1. The book of Matthew, chapter 27 and verse 1. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. So what day is it? Passover. I need you brothers to pay attention. Stay with me. Go ahead. Jump down to verse 15. Verse 15. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they would. What feast is this? Passover. Very good. I, I'm glad y'all staying with me. Jump down to verse 45 to 50. That's what we're going to read. Matthew 27, to 50. verse 45. Listen good. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. So now that part right there confuses some of you. You got to know Roman times. Abiel, get me the link for the calendar. Now I'm going to show you where we're going to go to. Let's go. This is going to explain the Jewish time opposed to Roman times. Go up. We said a six hour. Give me the six hour right there. Notice it says six hours. See when it starts? It says from noon to 1 p.m. is the sixth hour. Write that down. Six hour is from noon to 1 p.m. This is the afternoon. Read the verse again. Captain. Verse 45. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Now the ninth hour. See what time it says? The ninth hour is what time, brothers? From 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. So, why was there darkness from 12 noon to 3 in the afternoon? Why? One, two, three, four. Uh, let me hear some new hand. Uh, Liam. Let me hear you. It was an eclipse. Right. There was an eclipse. That's the only reason it was darkness over the whole land from 12 noon to 3 in the afternoon. Everybody understand that? All right. That, what verse was that? Go back to the calendar. Uh, Abiel? Yes. Thank you. All right. Now, what verse went Isaac again? Uh, verse 46. Read 45 again. Yes, sir. Now, from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Read. Some of them that stood there, when they heard that, said, This man calleth for Elias. Okay. And straightway, one of them ran and took a sponge and filled it with vinegar and put it on a reed and gave him to drink. The rest said, let be, let us see whether Elias will come to save him. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. What does it mean, yielded up the ghost? He what? He died. He gave up the spirit. What time is this? What time is this? This is three in the afternoon, between three and four. Everybody understand that? Write this down. He died on the cross on the ninth hour, which is from 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. Does everybody understand that? All right. Now, from there, let's get, I'm going to get you, let's get the Lord real quick. No, before we get that, before we get that, give me Matthew 27, 57. This is what I need you to understand. Matthew 27, 57. Watch this. Matthew 27, verse 57. When the even was come, there came a rich man of Arimathea, named Joseph, who also himself was Jesus' disciple. He went to Pilate and begged the body of Jesus. Then Pilate commanded the body to be delivered. 
Why did he beg for the body? Why did he beg for the body? Why did he beg for the body? According to the law, the body has to be buried the same day. You see, right. According to the law, the body has to be buried the same day before the next day comes in. Here's the law. Deuteronomy 21, 22. Let's get the law. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21 and verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin worthy of death, and he be, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree... His body shall not remain in all, in all hot night upon the tree, but thou shalt in any wise bury him that day. You have to bury him that day. What day was this, brothers? Think back. The Passover. Go ahead. Can you read it again? Go ahead, read it again. Read it again. Verse 22. And if a man have committed a sin. So it starts off by saying that if a man had committed a sin, because somebody might try to go there. And try to say there's a difference in the law. Read. Worthy of death. Worthy of death, come on. And he, and he be to be put to death, and thou hang him on a tree. His body shall not remain all night. So that, that not only applied to someone who committed sin who was on a tree. It ain't just talking about that. Read the rest of it. Upon the tree. But thou shalt in any wise. But thou shalt in any wise. Bury him that day. Any wise meaning at any time his body is to be put in the ground before the night, before the sundown it came in. Everybody Rega understand. Regardless of the situation. That's the reason why I want to right. end to read it again. Does everybody understand that? So now, he rushes, this is Joseph Arimathea, rushes to Pilate to get the body. According to the law, he has to be buried that day. Again, what day is this? Passover. Passover. Now, when we look at the calendar, okay, I want you to look at the calendar. You see where I got day one there, right? So he was in there. Now I'm going to go to the actual scripture. Get me, hold that, bear, bear with me a second. Get me Matthew 12 and 40. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 40. Listen good, listen good. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So Christ is telling you, he would be in the earth for how long? Three days and three nights. Now, in case you want to know how long a night or a day is, get John 11 and 9. It's going to explain to you how many hours are in the day and how many hours in the night. The book of John, chapter 11 and verse 9. Jesus answered, and there not 12 hours in the day? Are there not 12 hours in a day? So I, we read that because Christ said he would be how many days and nights in the earth? Three days and three nights. I want you to pay close attention to that. Now let's take a look at the calendar. He was buried Passover Eve, right? Not Eve, evening. Right there, you see it? He, was, he died, he died there on the 15th. Put in the ground, see where the, the one is, red? He was put in the ground there. Go next day, the 16th. That was the second evening, but it was the first of daytime. Remember, he was put in the ground in the evening time. Then the next day, the next day, you got the third evening, but it's the second day. Look up above, Abiel. See the two above it? Y'all see what I'm going with, right? Now, three days and three nights. The third day is the following. Y'all see that? Now get me Matthew 12 and 8. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 8. For the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath day. Christ has given all kind of clues. He said he's Lord of the Sabbath day. He's letting you know what day he was going to be resurrected because that's his day. Like it says in Revelation 1. What did John say? I was on the, in the spirit on what day? The Lord's, day? the Lord's day, which is the Sabbath day. Now, let's go to Matthew 28 and verse 1. I want to start at verse 1, Matthew 28. The book of Matthew, chapter 28 and verse 1. Go ahead. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. So the Sabbath is past. It's dawning towards the first day of the week. 
What is the first day of the week we call it today in English? Sunday. Sunday in English. Go ahead. Came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. He Come. is risen as he what? As he said. What did he say about his resurrection? He would be how long? Three days, three days and three nights in the earth. So he's, this, is, this is the first day of the week, so-called Sunday. Now, pay attention, pay attention, pay close attention. The dumb doctrine, the dumb, stupid, idiotic doctrine out there. Evil doctrine. Evil doctrine. Go and tell pro doctrine, which keeps you from the God's law, says the Sabbath day is based upon the new moon. Look, okay, if the new moon dictates the regular Sabbath, which it does not, the Sabbath is on which day? The seventh day of the week, right? Yep. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This would be, according to that dumb doctrine, their Sabbath, right? When would the next Sabbath be? The 14th. Read Matthew 28 again, one more again. Matthew 28 and verse 1. So Christ was crucified here, right? They say, oh, well, the 14th was the Sabbath day. Okay, if the 14th was the Sabbath day, then came Passover. Matthew 28, 1 again. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward... The first day of the week. Wait, 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 wait. There's a problem here. A big There's problem. a big problem here. A huge problem. It says it began to dawn towards the first day of the week. So this is, a, it's impossible, brothers, according to that scripture, because the Sabbath day is not dictated by the new moon. Everybody understand that? If y'all confused, let me know. We'll go through it again, step by step. Read it again, Isaac. In the end of the Sabbath... As it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So now, Christ died on what day, brothers? The Passover, right? The Passover, what time? Three. He said he would be in the earth how long? Three days to three nights. One, two, three. One, two, three. Matthew 28, one again. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. So it began to dawn towards the first day. The dawn would be here. Dawn, meaning daytime. Go ahead. The first day of the week. Go ahead. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the woman, Fear not ye, for I know that ye seek Jesus, which was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. The key part, he is risen as he said. Go by what he said, what he told you. He told you he would be in the earth three days and three nights. Understand that. So for y'all following his stupidity about the noon dictates the Sabbath, this would have been a Sabbath day if that was true. This would have been a Sabbath, and this would have been a Sabbath. There's no way the women came after these three days towards the first day of the week and the Sabbath, it was a so-called first day of the week. Y'all understand that? It makes no possible sense. So if y'all follow that dumb COINTEL pro doctrine, that's what I call it, because it's a cult mentality, you foolish. Go ahead, y'all. You want to say something? Well, the scriptures tell you about the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is going to come every how many days? So if you're trying to base the Sabbath on the new moon, the new moon does not land on the same day every, every month, does it? So that's how, like when we went over the scripture before, we went over this class before, you have to get rid of certain days to try to make it fit. That's wicked as hell. How in the hell are you just going to just get rid of days? Right. How are you just going to just say days don't count? <laughs> Here you driving a car, you get pulled over, and you, they found out that something's wrong with your license or something, 
and you got to go to court. And they mark the date down. And you don't show up in court because you say, well, you show up when they finally put the bench warrant, the bench warrant out on your behind and bring you in. Now you're standing before the now you're standing before the judge. They say, Well, why didn't you come when you was issued the summons? You're gonna tell them because that day didn't count. They throwing your dumb black ass in jail. That's what they're gonna do, where you deserve to be. <laughs> I hope y'all understand that. So I hope there should be no more dumb, idiotic confusion over that stupidity. You know, ever, uh, ever, uh, ever. Yeah, yeah, you know something, man. You know, that's why Nehemiah eight and eight is very important. Because the, when you meditate on it, that means Monday will be the new day. The Monday will be the beginning of the week. Tuesday can be the beginning of the week. Wednesday can be. That's confusion. Right. You understand? Thursday can be the. That's confusion. They want their weekend to be off so they can be in the club, commit wickedness. That's what the whole thing is about. I just realized something. If you're going to say that the new moon dictates the Sabbath, you know what high holy day you can't keep? No, no, no. There's a particular, there's one that I'm thinking of. There's one particular holy, holy day that the Most High have in the scriptures that you cannot keep if you're going to use that doctrine. The Feast of Weeks. Because you have to count seven consecutive Sabbaths. There's no way in the world you could keep that. So that means you got, if that's the case, that means they're breaking that law. They don't keep no laws, brother. You know them knuckleheads don't keep no law. It's like Cohen you said, tell pro, brother. Brother, you know, it's just like you said. If you're going to be that willful and stupid, you, des you deserve to get what you're going to get. Because the scriptures are plain. The scriptures are plain and they cannot be broken. You ain't no way in the world you can stretch three days and three nights and make a Sabbath somewhere else when it's telling you straight up in the scriptures. Exactly. Right. You're going to say that Christ is lying. That's basically what That's what, what they're say. saying, that Christ is lying. You're going to say that you're right, but the Bible wait, and Christ is wrong. Wait, here it goes. I'm going to tell you to show you that this evil doctrine. They said, although the Bible doesn't say it, they found a manuscript that said Christ was in the ground for eight days. Seven to eight days. Well, wait a minute. The manuscript, get, I'm sorry, Elder. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Get that. Get Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. Now that you just said that. Ecclesiastes 12 and uh, 13, I think it is. They found the doctrine. Outside the Bible. And then give me another one. Give me Proverbs 30 and 6. six. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. Because it ain't in the Bible, like Deacon I found. It ain't in there. Show us seven that Christ was in the earth seven to eight days. I mean, are, are y'all blind? Did y'all see what we just went over? We went to Matthew 12 and 40 where Christ out of his own mouth said, An adulterous, wicked generation seeketh the sign, and none shall be given except by the prophet Jonah, by the, by the brother Jonah. And then it said, for three, nights, for three days and three nights, Jonah was in the belly of the, of the whale, in the bottom, and he said, The same shall be the son of man in the belly of the earth. That's without a Christ's own mouth. Right. Now, you're going to try to tell me that Christ is wrong so that you could be right? Mm -hmm. The hell with you. <laughs> Read it. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Okay, it's the verse I need before that then. Verse 12. That's what I want. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books there is no end. Of the making of many books on God. That's what it's talking about. Mm -hmm. The many books that are out here that's telling you about the Bible telling you about the disciples, telling you about Christ and everything else. Oh, you got plenty of these books out here talking about the Most High and His Word. Listen, read it again. And further by these, my son, be admonished. Be warned. That's what he's saying. Be warned. Don't be stupid. That's what he's saying. I got to speak straight up. And don't be stupid. Of making Nothing trumps the Bible. Read. Of making many books. There is no end. There is no end of these books. There's always got a book out here talking about, well, the Bible meant this, the Bible meant that. Come on. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. If these fools would have understood that, that those books are a waste of time. If you're going to compare those books to the Bible, you should close those books down. Because if you, or you, once you're trying to say that the books is saying that the Bible is saying something else, you know you got garbage. It's probably in that same book of witchcraft where they got the finger signals. <laughs> Symbols, whatever that stupidity is. Proverbs 30 and 6. Wait a minute. You didn't finish that? No. Read on. Let us hear 
the conclusion. Read, read that statement again that you just read. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. There is no end to these books. Come on. And much study is a weariness of the flesh. And the study of these books is a waste of time. Read. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the, in the final result of everything. Fear God. Fear God. And keep his commandments. Where are God's commandments found at? In the Bible. So that's the book you're supposed to be reading. That's the book you're supposed to be following. That's why Isaiah 34, 16 says, Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. None, shall none want of her. these shall fail, and none shall want her mate. You can't mate this Bible with no other book. Talking about books on God. Now give me the other one. Proverbs 30 and 6. 30 and 6. Start with the fifth verse, 30 and 5. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5. Every word of God is pure. No, according to some of these idiots, the, some of the words in the Bible are wrong. <laughs> Read it again. Every word of God is... What, what does every mean? All the words. Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. He is a shield to those believers who follow the book. That's what it's talking about. He is a he's a true he's a true uh, shield unto those who says God's words come before everybody else's words. Read. Add thou not unto his words. When you bring in other doctrines and other literature, what was that thing you were just saying? They said Christ was in the ground from seven to eight days. According to what? According to another book, another a, manuscript. Um, a manuscript. Add not the manuscript of of man. To God's pure words. That's God warning you straight up. Come on. Lest he reprove thee. Unless he correct your wicked dumb behind. Like you're being corrected now. Go ahead. And thou be found a liar. So let it be written. So let it be done. So you, my chubby friend, are a liar. You are a liar. You and your whole cult of personality. Liars. Every last one of you. Um, real quick, Sirach 21 and verse 18. Sirach 21 and verse 18. This is what happens when you don't keep the most eyes laws. There's a warning here from the prophets. Got it? The book of Sirach, chapter 21 and verse 18. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool. The Bible to a fool is like a house that's destroyed. There's no value, it's gone, there's no need to get into, to, to dwell inside of it. Go ahead. And the knowledge of the unwise. The knowledge of the ungodly or sinful. Go ahead. Is as talk without sense. That's what that is. Is as talk without no sense talk at all. Talk without sense. Talk without sense. <laughs> that's, that's a cold cut, clear scripture. Read what the, that last part you just said, what? And the knowledge of the unwise. And the knowledge of the unwise. Is as talk Without sense. It's like talk without sense. All these dumb, wild, crazy, lunatic Add doctrines. eight more days. Right. Watch if Abby, give me the video. It's give like the a video. man with no sense. Give me the video, Abby. Give me the video. These are, you got some members in there in their stupid camps. That's these yip, 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 yip dudes. They'll say, for example, well, there's seven to eight more days and yeah, how wish I was in Earth. Play it. Tell me what the sound. Turn it up, turn it up, turn it up. Come on. Then they say something stupid like, well, in the month of May, all of Europe is going to get the chip. And then all the members say what? Then they say, wait a minute, we can rape. Nine years old girls and twelve year olds, as long as they get their menstrual, and all the members say what? <laughs> <laughs> what else stupid thing they be saying out there? Oh no, they say we every day, they say the black woman is not gonna make it into the kingdom of heaven, and all that idiot members say what? <laughs> I can't take it no more. I, I just give up. I give up. 
And if y'all follow them, shame on you. Hey, shame on you. And Elder, what they're going to say to justify themselves, this is, the, this is when they're destroyed, because they always get destroyed. They always come back with, only the elect can see the foolishness we put out. Right, if you're right. not of the elect, you won't see it. Right. <laughs> you must be of the elect. You don't got the oil on. You don't have the oil. <laughs> you don't see it. The Most High is taken away from you. What they're saying is, you dumb zombies that are following them, don't listen to the correction that they're putting out. I ordain you men to be the elect, so listen to me. Okay? And that's how you know they keep saying that you're the zombies. Okay? We searching out the scriptures and proving them wrong. Those men ain't searching nothing, and none of them can come up to him and challenge them, or they'll kick them out. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, a, yeah. A, a zombie is one that'll sit there knowing that the man is going off and not say nothing. And Get follow back, mindlessly. <laughs> And follow <laughs> mindlessly. Look, looking around and you know it's, it's clear in your face and every damn thing as you know, you know okay. this man. Because you see when they come up, y'all, stop. You see in their face, they don't know what they're saying to be true. You can see the doubt in their face. That's why they get their behind handed to them. No. No, you see, we, you see how clearly the elder went over the scriptures concerning the Sabbath. All right, it's not based on the new moon. All right, but guess what? You still, Ella, believe it or not, you still got brothers that go and follow after that foolishness. Yep, 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 Because remember, we had this brother in Atlanta camp that left us and, and went with that same wicked group. But the point is this. You mean the one that made a video on the yeah, toilet? The, yeah, the, the, the brother the that went to the bathroom and make a video the in the, in the toilet. The bomb is real life. Yeah. He's, he's saying he ain't with him no more. <laughs> but listen, but listen, this is the point, though. You understand? The scriptures say you're going to heap to yourself teachers having itching ears. So even though we explain this clearly to you all, as some of you all, not all of you all, some of you all, you brothers that have that itching ears that might, might want to beat your wife, want to deal with prostitutes, you're going to still go. You're going to still yep, yep. go and link up with these guys. And you know what you're going to say? You all was off with that new moon. You understand? So you all, you all going to do what you all hey, got to do. Not only are they going to say you was off, they're going to say, we know the right explanation and we're not going to give it to you. Right. You heard them say that now? We know and we yep, ain't yep, telling yep, you. Yep, 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 yep. And, and everybody's going to go, yep, 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 yep. And, and y'all ain't going to squeeze it out of me either. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> Guess what? There's going to be new, more COINTELPRO doctrines to come to cause confusion to disrupt the nation of Israel from rising. But it shall fail. Listen, good brothers and sisters, it shall fail. There's nothing going to stop the word of the Most High. Nothing. Not all the evil in the world is not. What did Christ say? The gates of hell shall not prevail. Shalom, brothers and shalom, sisters. I'm Elder Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. As many of you are finding out, Christianity has destroyed our people. For the past 400 years, we have been indoctrinated in lies. Those lies of Christianity have not benefited our people in the least bit. Many of you know this. So, like Christ said in John chapter 3, verse 3, he said, except ye be born again, you shall not inherit the kingdom of heaven. So in order to inherit the kingdom of heaven, which shall be established on earth, you must be born again. What does that mean? Many of you always quote that, but you don't understand what that means. When you go to 2nd Ezra, chapter 14, verse 34, Ezra said, Therefore, if so be that ye will subdue your own understanding, meaning subdue all that you have learned here in Babylon the Great, it says, and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive. What does that mean? Meaning you must be taught all over again, taught your nationality, taught why it is that we as a people went into slavery here in America. Who are we? What is the mystery of why this country, these nations have changed our nationality? We here at Israel United in Christ, we have classes seven days a week, three times a day, all for what? For your learning, for your edification. You will learn things never taught to you before. You will learn history, you will learn prophecy, and more importantly, you will learn the dynamics of what you need today to survive as a people. One third of Israel is prophesied to repent of their sins and come into this truth. So now we need you brothers and sisters. Come join us here at IsraelUnite.org. 
go to our online classes and register. This is for you. This is for the redemption of the 12 tribes of Israel, brothers and sisters. I hope you understand that. Isaiah chapter 62, verse 6 says, I have set watchmen upon thy walls, O Jerusalem, which shall never hold their peace day nor night. Ye that make mention of the Lord, keep not silent. And brothers and sisters, we are not keeping silence. So come join us. Help, help us build this truth. Donate to us so that we can keep this truth on and on. Push it forward. Help us get this gospel out. Because Christ said, when this gospel is taught throughout the earth, then shall the end come. So with that, brothers and sisters, we say shalom.